Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Larry Johns. I would like to welcome you to Ground Zero Loud. Thank you. It's great to be back. Every week there's, uh, there's something crazy going on in the world, something fierce, something foul, and sometimes something funny. Now, we talked about the Black Widow Spider from Chile. Of course, you know about that. And we have, we have a lot of laughs up here at the Ground Zero Lounge. But what I want to open the show with tonight is something that's been bothering me for some time. It has to do with propaganda, it has to do with mind control, it has to do with semantics, and it has a lot to do with a lot of other things. But basically, it has to do with a whole mindset that is going to fuck you up ever, 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 every step of the way. It's, it's called totalitarian control and the way it's implemented is behind certain words and certain phrases, okay? Now, a few years ago, the word was patriot. After the 9-11 attacks, or the 9-11 whatever it was, there are those of us here who are convinced and sure that it was an inside job, but in any case, the coin of the realm at that time was a patriot. So suddenly everyone had to become a patriot. Oh no, it's the time of the season. Gotta turn off the cell phone. There we go. It's off. It's off. It's off. Another car deal off. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Another car deal off. Um, talking about car deals. I, I had. To, has this ever happened to you? I mean, it's never. It's happened to me as, as a as a salesman. I worked at the. A guy comes into the to the dealership. His daughter is graduating. She wants his car. He's got to go out and buy a car for the first time in 12 years. Okay. So he doesn't really know. I mean, he's just. He doesn't know anything about my particular brand, which is unknown. But those of you who know what it is. And I don't want to plug him here <laughs> for various reasons. Anyways, um, so he comes up and he says, I'm about two months out. I'm about two or three months out. And so I go and drive him on this unnamed, unknown car that I represent. And, I'll answer that one. And um, he kind of likes the car. And so we go back and I say, listen, this is the way we do it. If you like the car, we can work a deal. You give me an offer. He says, well, can I do it by phone? Sure, do it by phone. So, he, he, you know, he's, he says he's two or three months out. So, about an hour later on a very busy Saturday, he calls me and says, Larry, he says, uh, I got an offer to make in your car. You know, it's, uh, it's the sticker's 23, I'm gonna offer you 17. Now take it to that to your manager. Okay, so I take it to the manager. Anyway, to make a long story short, very long and excruciating, sir, we work a deal. My manager gives me a number. We work a deal. You know, we have a, a handshake over the phone. I take a deposit, okay? And then the manager looks at it and says, oh, no, 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 that's not what I told you. Because he looked at it again and said that it wasn't a, a big enough of a deal for the company, right? So he said, oh, Larry, you must have heard wrong. That wasn't the deal. The deal was $1,000 more. You misheard it, right, Larry? I go, fuck you, that was the deal. And he says, no, no, you misheard it. Tell the customer, you know, blah, blah. I said, fuck you, that was the deal, eat it. He says, okay, well, I don't repeat what he says after that. So anyway, I try to leave a message with a, with a customer, can't get a hold of him. He shows up the next morning at 8, you know, we open at 9, he's there at 8.45 to pick up his car. And I go up and I, I try to tell him, I say, uh, uh, let's take a, what's a miscellaneous name? Let's say Pat. I say, Pat, I'm sorry, you know, I try to get this through with the manager uh, over it. Doesn't hear a thing. All he's, he's there to pick up his car. And I say, you know, the deal's off, Pat. He doesn't hear it. Doesn't hear it. He's inspecting the car. He doesn't hear anything. 
I get the manager and says, look at that, it's, it's going to cost you $1,000 more. He just still doesn't hear it. So he gets close to finance and he goes, what, I got to pay $1,000 more for a deal that I made last night? And so he walked. So, I don't know what the moral of the car business is, but the story is, 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 is the company mentality can change its mind, but it doesn't understand what customer service and public relations is. They can try to screw everybody out of every deal, but if somebody comes in thinking they have one thing, and they jack them around and try to give them another, they're gone. And it's the same thing with any business. But I, I don't truly know how I got on this distraction, except to say... Where's your cell phone? Oh, that's it. That's cell phone, not the car deal. Thank you. <laughs> Anyhow, um, we were talking about words. Now I remember. We were talking about patriot. And we were talking about a word that you hear every day but it is fucking you, it is castrating you, and you don't even know it. And that word starts with an A. And that word is accountability. There is none. Well, the trick is, both from the left, and the right, and the center, is that suddenly, everyone has to be accountable. You have to be accountable in your job. You have to be accountable as a parent. You have to be accountable. Everybody goes, oh well, just like just like the word patriot, just like the word patriot, this word accountability or faith, somehow it rings like, oh yeah, oh yeah, accountability. Yeah, I should be accountable. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well he has to be accountable. Well they have to be accountable. The government has to be accountable. All this garbage. And guess what, folks? What does accountable really mean? Accountability means that you are chipped, cataloged, and timed so you have no freedom left. They know exactly where you are, what you buy, what you surf the net. The whole idea is what they call accountability is the tenor and strength of your chains. So don't let anybody fool you when they say, oh, well, we're in this company here, we're going to have more accountability for all of our secretaries. What does that mean? That means they can't have their, their lunch out with their, their cronies or two drinks at the bar or whatever it is. Accountability means you're fucked, and that's the name that they're fucking you under. <clears throat> the word for the day. It's accountability. Don't believe it. Throw it back in their faces. Says, I'm not going to take this accountability. As, uh, <laughs> as Patrick McGowan said in The Prisoner, I am a free man. I am not a number. Remember those old days? That was 1967. Thank you. That's right. We are free. Um, who is? You are number two, or you are number two, however you want to look at it. But that's really the point, is that accountability is statistics. Accountability is, yes, I will accept to be a number. And the real trick, the real trick to get you to fuck yourselves and to being accountable is to say, oh yeah, well I want my, te my son's teachers to be accountable. I want the local city council to be accountable. I want blah, blah, blah to be accountable. You fuck yourselves because you want to fuck the other guy, right? And use the word accountability to do it. So, I've said my piece. And now, it's my pleasure to bring up one of the resident artists of Ground Zero Lounge, Drew Slim, to do whatever he wants to do. Come on up, Drew. Where is he? Okay, come on up. Don't tell me you changed your name. Drew Slum. Drew Slum. And I thought it was Drew Slim all the time. No, it's a workplace. Like, it's real. Drew Slum is very real. Drew Slum. And Drew Slim is not. No. <laughs> now you so figure out your imagination. No. 
I've been listening to too much country blues. <laughs> it's not true slim, folks. It's true slim. Go for it. Thank you. Televised lies, probe minds, strobe like high speed, vice grip, squeeze, make minds bleed, secrete indiscreet beats in the street. Please, we've heard merciless verses serving multiple purposes. Do what you love because we live to work and work to live while genocide's very alive and buried inside circuit chips. I might not know a lot, but doggone God, I'm sure of this. They thought they had it locked, but Babylon ain't permanent. The serpent is monstrous. Guns, oil, drugs, the acronym for the in God we trust. Well, their facade has just grown and blossomed, bro. All pompous and confident in their dominance. But as long as our concepts exist, the rigid grid system got a glitch, trick, trickle, pitiful depression we slept in and we can keep sleeping and dreaming. But as long as we're still breathing and our hearts still beating, believe me, it ain't too late to awake and begin achieving, begin seeing what we're seeking, agreeing with the wiseness of righteous teachings, humane beings on an earth with a serpentile style so deceiving. We need to keep hard working and nourishing our seedlings as they learn from what they're seeing. We're being brutal with truthful, honest answers and opinions, descriptions of this cancerous system that we live in, where the richest ones are hidden, but on a sick and twisted mission, slipping in their false wisdom. What they did is done and still goes unforgiven, and we're all victims, and at as much fault as the wicked, as long as we're enlisted in this instant institution where everything's disposable, filling holes full of pollution, we're pushing and we're pulling, filling souls full of confusion. Seems like nobody knew a solution, at least not a new one, a reused one. Revolution. Drew Slav, give it up, thank you. We want to welcome everybody also who wants to contribute to the lounge. To their voice, it's our weapon of choice. Poetry is our favorite weapon. But come up and do whatever you want to do. We can do tap dance, we can do whatever we want. This is the lounge. As long as we are absolutely unaccountable to anybody, for anybody, just absolutely free. That's an old Frank Zappa record, but anyway, the point is, is that they will, what is the purpose of propaganda? is to enslave you and the way they do it is with words so watch out anybody says oh those doctors got to be accountable uh-huh the cops got to be accountable it's just one of those tricky words that they're using not to make them accountable but to enslave you there thank you now we want to give one big thanks to Frank here at Dante's. We're coming to you live. Also to Sarah who's serving the drinks. Big hand to Sarah. Dawson preparing the food. This is a fantastic place to be every Monday night. It's like home away from home for a lot of people. And for those who are listening on the internet and wish they were here, we would like the council to start your own Ground Zero Lounge someplace so you have a place to go where you are free to speak your mind we don't have an axe to grind here. We're not to the left, we're not to the right, we're not in the middle, we're nowhere, and we're also everywhere. And speaking of everywhere, it's time to bring up the host and founder of Ground Zero Lounge, Clyde Lewis, Clyde. Yeah! Uh, hi everybody. Boy, have I had a rough weekend. And I'm not gonna go into it too much because I don't want to have this be a pity fest for me. Because I'm on drugs. It's good to be here. Um, legal drugs, mind you. Uh, drugs to calm me down. Drugs to make me feel like I can stand up. I I did a bad thing. I pushed it too hard this weekend. Kind of collapsed. I don't know. It's been all over the internet. MySpace. You name it. They've been talking about. It. I was in the hospital over the weekend, and, and I'm like thinking to myself, okay, cool. I'm gonna have to modify some of the things that I do so I can be a little bit more, I guess, capable of, of being on the stage tonight. And, uh, but I thank the good doctors at OHSU for keeping me uh, pretty much stable right now because I was really feeling kind of out of it the past couple days. 
Yeah. Tell you, uh, have we, anybody listen to the Rick Emerson show today? Anyone? My applause. I was on Rick's show today. Finally, Rick decided to have me back on. I don't know why the hell he didn't have me on before we had me back on. And as I was waiting to go on the show, I was here, you know, and this is me right on all kinds of drugs to calm me down, take my pain away, and make me feel good, right? In the, in the hospital. I'm sitting on the phone, they get ready to dismiss me because they say, hey, you know, you're doing fine, we think you're gonna be fine, we'll turn you out on the streets so and come back in about six months when you work yourself to a, fr a frazzle again. And I'm sitting there on the phone listening to this commercial, and it's a commercial for Jiggles. Anybody hear those guys? He goes, Jiggles, come to Jiggles and see me jiggle, 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 jiggle. And I'm sitting there listening to that, I'm thinking, you know, here I am hearing, I Jiggles. I am that little bear that's in your dryer. I was hearing that. And I was hearing Snuggles the bear telling me how he could make my night better. You know, with my two drink minimum, I get a jack off and, and with this little bear, you know? And I'm fucked up. I'm realizing, you know, why would I want to have sex with a, with a, with a, a teddy bear who hangs out in my dryer? You know, it's like I'm having sex with a fucking house slipper. I mean, what would... Why would I want to do that, right? And so I, so I realized, no, I'm listening to a goddamn jiggle story. And when did we ever decide that women who sound like Muppets are, are sexy? It's like, you know, if, if you want sex, fuck, you, know, you have sex with Miss Piggy. Is that a turn on? You know, something cross between Yoda and Posse Bear? Oh, pretty me, frog! I, I don't get it. I mean, these women, they sound like they're Muppets, or they sound like they're, I don't know, it, it just doesn't get me. It, that's not sexy to me. It's not sexy at all. I didn't come and talk about sex. Or having sex with bears. Or slippers. Or slippers. You want sex with bears. You want to see slippers in the hospital. Yeah, right? I mean, uh, I got plenty of... In fact, I'm... Look at this. These are issued by OHSU. Oh, nice. And so are these. I stole them. Oh my god, it's on the internet. I'm screwed. <laughs> nice. How many people have wanted to take a pair of surgeon's pants out of the hospital by applause? Yeah. Fucking A you want them. They're nice and comfortable. I mean, I, I got them because, you know, when I was in the hospital, I thought, yeah, you're damn right I want those. I'm going to take them. I'm paying for them anyway. Or my insurance company's paying for them or something like that. Um, but no, it's true. I've been uh, really working hard. I didn't go to Murray Island. I guess it's no surprise. I, I was about ready to go to Murray Island and I collapsed and they rushed me to the hospital because they were saying that I was exhausted and that I needed to get my body looked at and so they, they gave me a good look down and there are a lot of things I'm going to have to change about my body and my life and, and a number of things I have to modify my lifestyle because I'm just a party animal. I, I, what I'm going to do is I'm still going to party but I'm not going to party as hard, I don't think. I mean, being 43, I think I'm learning my mortality and I'm not a teenager anymore. And I think I'm beginning to realize that, you know, when you reach a certain part, you have what is known as the suicidal out adolescence part. How many people have remembered their suicidal adolescence back when they were kids? By applause, right? I'm not sure it's suicidal. And no, no, it was suicidal. I'll tell you why it's suicidal. Because you think you can do fucking everything when you're a teenager, and no one can tell you to do anything else, right? But that's just immoral. That's no, not, it's that's not. not suicidal. It's suicidal. See, it's suicidal to think that you can put away like a case of beer in one setting and not wake up with a hangover that's going to cause your head to explode in five different places. It, I mean, you don't realize that you're putting stuff into your body, you're doing things to yourself, and it's like, you know, you don't realize that what you're doing is going to affect you later on. And so, when you get to that point where your body says no more, and it's, your body starts rebelling against you, you have to take a few things into consideration, you have to start making some modifications. What I'm getting at is I'm getting at the idea that the United States of America has to get out of this idea of suicidal adolescence. We are in this position now where we feel like that whatever we shoot, snort, fuck, or eat is what everybody else wants to shoot, snort, fuck, or eat. And that is not how we're going to be, we're not gonna, we're, we shouldn't be that way at all. Because what we are is we are excessive. We are that might group who believes that just because we have the guns to kill, just because we have the big penises, we decided we're going to go to the cockfight and we're going to go with everything loaded on us. And we feel that if we go into that cockfight with everything loaded on us, there's no way in hell anybody's going to come back and bite us in the ass. Well, I saw Star Wars and the Ewoks won. 
The Ewoks are winning now. They're winning now, and what happens when the Ewoks win? What happens when the Rebels win? What happens when you start seeing the uprising going on? I'll tell you what happens. There are other groups, there are other parts of the Hydra that you cut off one head, the other head grows. It always happens. It's the way it always is in history. When you have one society doing one thing, there's a secret society back in that society, back in that society up. It's the Hydra. It's the, it's the brain without a head. The brain continues, but the head, every time you cut it off, the brain continues in the same process. As I said about last week, as I said, you know, meet the old boss, save us the new boss, we won't get fooled again, or will we get fooled again? 58% of the American people are not satisfied with the candidates they're having offered to them as, as, as presidential candidates. They're not satisfied with those candidates. So with that in mind, we need to understand then what does that mean to us as Americans? If we are unhappy with what's being given to us, then why don't we do something about it instead of just saying, okay, we're going to accept what we're given. I mean, I hear people all the time complain about how shitty music is today. And I say to myself, well, the reason why it's shitty is because listen to what we got. Listen to what we have. I mean, there's good music out there, and I, I guess it's subjective because I can say, well, that's good, that's bad, that's good, that's bad. But I listen to a lot of it lately, and some of it, I mean, I don't understand why it's made. And I guess that makes me sound like an old man, get off my lawn, but I'm serious. I mean, rock and roll, rhythm and blues, Maybe a few country songs here and there, and all that, and a couple great rap songs make my day. But not everything is going to be good, and a lot of it out there is shit. And so what does the music industry do? They tell you, well, you're going to have to comply to this, you're going to have to not download because you're hurting our business. Same with movies. Movie business profits for the summer have dropped. And you know why they drop? Because all we've been seeing in the movies are sequels. If we do it one way, we'll do it three more times just so we get it right. If we do one more, we got to do another war in order to get it right, and then yet another war. We got to get that right. So we have Afghanistan, we have Iraq, the sequel, and the and the threequel will be Iran, or what other country we decide to bomb. And there's all those little franchise companies that we want to like bomb out and take out. So what we're looking at is we're looking at a corporate pattern for your war, and a corporate pattern for your life, and a corporate pattern, and a corporate blueprint that is there for you to follow. And they use all kinds of things as their blueprints. And I've talked about this before. They have Nostradamus. They have the Bible, they have the Quran, they have the Talmud, they have um, uh, astrology. They use all these things as their methods by which they use to create that feeling of apocalyptic doom or to scratch that apocalyptic itch that everybody has right now. A lot of people believe that these are the end times and they believe it for a reason. It's because every time you turn on the TV set, you're hearing it on TV. You're watching people talk about, is this the end of the world? Is this the end? Is this the end? No, it's really not. I mean, 20, if I say the number 2012, everybody knows what I'm talking about. It's because the, the media has gone to great pains to remind you that in 2012, we're all screwed. In 2012, the world's going to end. And what if it doesn't end? What if something happens that isn't the world ending? But by God, you take a look at everything around you. We've got global warming. We've got an inconvenient excuse. To say that there's global warming, we've got wars, we've got rumors of wars, we've got battles, we've got problems. We've got every little savior out there to save us from ourselves. We've got Big Brother. We've got surveillance society. We've got secret governments. We've got clash of civilizations. They've got all these fail-safes. And all these fail-safes are being put in there to get you to believe that this is what we are. A troubled group of people that need to be protected from ourselves. And what are they going to do to create that protection? They're going to create a police state and a police state mentality. Shows on TV right now all dealing with policemen, lawyers. <coughs> all dealing with policemen and lawyers. Why? Because our reality shows are based around cops kicking at the doors, of people kicking and screaming at 3 o'clock in the morning saying, no, I don't have a pot plant in my backyard. And they go to jail. And it's not all... It, it's not always... Normal everyday Joes, it's always some big black guy that they want you to be afraid of. How many people were noticing, I don't even remember the name of the girl, another white girl was abducted the other day and they made a big news story out of it by applause. I didn't know her name, I didn't care. Yeah. Another, another white girl was abducted and we're supposed to give a fucking shit about this. I could care less. You know, there's a lot more ugliness and dishonesty and stuff going on in our government now that they should be paying attention to that. 
The only reason why it's a story is because they got it on film. You get the abduction on film, you get to have it right there, and you get to care about it. But you can always walk away and not give a shit about it. But you know, there are things more important to me right now, and that is the undercurrent. The undercurrent that's being reported right now. How many people have been watching the news lately, or, okay, first of all, back, let's go back a little bit to, I think it was a couple days ago, the Oregonian. How many people saw that new law that the NRA is backing about not giving guns to mentally ill people? Right. By applause. The NRA is backing it because they say it's logical. Of course it's logical. You don't give guns to somebody who might kill you. That's stupid. You know, you don't do that. But did you see who was on the front page representing that mentally ill person with a gun? Mr. Cho. With his hands out, crucifixion style, holding out those guns, going, look at me, I am your poster child for fear, hatred, and gun control. Our foot got in the door. We gave you some stupid thing that you would say, oh yes, I'm, I'm, I'm for that. That's how it starts. They give you something to think about. Like, oh, well, we don't give the guns to the Okay. Problem, reaction, solution. Exactly. Problem, reaction, solution. They do it for 100 years. They do it all the time. You're right. But see, remember we did the dissecting here of why Mr. Cho is our poster child for security. It's because his sister worked for McDeal, McNeil's. And McNeil's chief uh, export is security systems given to places in Iraq to rebuild Iraq and security systems at the airports, and security systems to detect what? Guns. So here we have a tie where this guy is a poster child for a good reason, because he's got ties to that company. And that tie, that company, of course, is funded by Veritas, which of course the two chief members are the people who are members of the Council on Foreign Relations. Now how many people by applause know who the Council on Foreign Relations are? They are, for those of you that don't know, how many people remember when 9-11 happened and George Bush got up and he made a confession to the world that all conspiracy theorists knew? And that is, while 9-11 was going on, there was a shadow government in charge of the country by applause. That shadow government, ladies and gentlemen, was the Council on Foreign Relations. And their job is to make sure that the continuity of government continues in countries where continuity of government is going to be compromised. Every leader, every person, there are people who join those groups, and when they're a part of those groups, they have the commitment and the responsibility to keep the continuity of government going on. The continuity of government continues with the Council on Foreign Relations. And there are a lot of people who are members of the Council on Foreign Relations, a lot of people that, of course, uh, are members, and they've been members, and they are in your presidencies, they are your congressmen, they are in high places. How many people, you know, I was talking about our good friend Angelina Jolie, Angelina Jolie just made the news a couple days ago. You know what she did besides one guy and a designer kid? She became a member of the CFR. Yes, she did. What? Yes, she did. Yes. Now remember when I was remember when I was telling everybody here and they just didn't understand it when I was talking about the royalty situation? And I said, hey, we need to have our own royal people. Look, we've got Angelina Jolie and we've got Brad Pitt. Well, Angelina Jolie just solidified her position in the country, right? She joined one of the most notorious shadow government agencies in the country. Why is that? Who knows? But maybe she's in there because, you know, she wants to hang out with the elite, with the glitterati, with everybody that's important. A lot of people are in that group. A lot of people are in that group. George W. Uh, George w. Bush, George H. W. Bush, John Edwards, John Kerry, who? Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton. Hillary Clinton. Barbara Walters. Walter Cronkite. Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter. Who? You, you, Dan Rather. You call out a name. Not Dan Rather. Dan Rather is. Dan Rather is. He's not? It's Brokaw. You sure? It's Brokaw. It's Brokaw. Okay, Brokaw. I'm John Brokaw. I don't remember the council on foreign relations. I can't say it, but I don't remember the council. We'll see it. Don Ivis. No, Don Ivis. Tom Brokaw and Don Ivis are the same person. Ever notice that? Rosie O'Donnell. No, no. Tom Brokaw and Don Ivis. Here is Tom Brokaw talking. Oh, well, this is Tom Brokaw in New York. Let me see now the news. I'll see you tonight. And then there's there's uh, Don Ennis. Oh, you punks! That's all you are, a bunch of punks. Shut up. I'll see you tonight. Same guy. They just have a different puppet, a different hand of the ass to talk. Oh, God, they have a nappy headed hose. I don't know. See you tonight. No. Uh, but yeah, these guys are members of the Council on Foreign Relations. They are the CFR. They are the guys that basically give you your continuity of government. So, 
That means that they have this secret brotherhood where they basically have agendas, and those agendas are carried out. Those agendas have been carried out because they have their little uh, agendas that they pull out the old pedigree, and they say, okay, here's what we're doing this year, folks, and they have to abide by that. So the CFR is literally in control. Do you know one of the things the CFR is proposing? They are proposing the union between Canada, the United States, and Mexico. Did you guys know that? Yep. Yes. Oh, I would know that. Though. Yeah. Yeah, applause. I hear applause. They're building the superhighway as we speak. Yeah, they're building the superhighway as we speak. They're, they're putting together a union that they want to propose. Why? Because it's for our own survival, our own good, they say. Well, actually, it, it, I don't know if it is or not, but sovereignty is basically bullshit. I have no idea, but they think it's going to be better for us to do this. Maybe they know something we don't. But yet, at the same time, it's that, bueno, loser. At the same time, we know the CFR is on public record, standing there behind us. The major media claims it's an urban myth. This idea. The urban uh, myth is the CFR. Yeah. Well, the urban myth, according to the newspapers and the major media, is that some power elite wants to bring North America together in one great union. That's the urban myth, according to, to what the the people are hearing. They proposed it since the time of Bill Clinton. They've been proposing it since Clinton. And Ben uh, is right behind it, and everybody else is right behind it. Even, even lobby the back line. Okay. In the Articles of Confederation, there was a clause in that that would allow Canada statehood without ratification. But see, that's the point. Are they, are they going to give statehood to Canada? Or to New Mexico? Or are they going to give... It all were to get planned. But, but see, here's the deal. Will? Yeah, Vermont. What, will they give the statehood to Canada? Or will we just all of a sudden become British subjects again? Under the rule of Britannia. I mean, I mean, these things are forming, right? The European Union? People don't want that damn European Union. They know how na Nazi it is. And they don't want it. They're fighting against it. We're fighting against this. And who's behind the European Union? The CFR. CFR and all the shadow governments are behind these unionizations. And what is their purpose with unionizations? Their purpose is, for some reason, to make a lot of money off something that is going to be a big bomb that's going to cause everybody to want to unite like this. Whether it be someone pulling out their money, some country dropping an atom bomb on you, or something else just as horrible like maybe a disease, famine, or pestilence. They're planning for it. They are planning for this. Now, how many of you are familiar with the, the symbol of our good friends, the CFR. The symbol for the CFR is a naked man riding on a white horse. You can look this up on the internet if you don't believe me. Type in images in Google, type in Council on Foreign Relations, and it'll show you a picture of a man, a naked man riding a horse, holding up his left hand, and he'll be holding it out to symbolize the sixth seal, or the opening of the sixth seal. Death rides a pale horse. No, death rides a pale horse, but who rides the white horse? Who rides the white horse? John Lennon. No, John Lennon. Who the hell said that? Who rides the white horse? You guys fell asleep in Sunday school? Yeah. The fucking Antichrist rides the white horse. He has a bow and a crown, and he goes and he takes over these countries. He takes over countries, and he rules with the iron fist and the slaughter. The white horse prophecy, the idea that someone will come in and change government. Oh, now, they didn't teach us that. Well, no. <laughs> they didn't teach us that in Catholicism, but they taught us that in Mormonism. And I'll tell you more about that. Go ahead. Who's up there talking? Sarah, were you up there? Glenn, who's up there? Go ahead and get up there if you're going to talk. I, I can't see you. Thursday evening, uh, June 21st. Does this have something to do with what I'm talking about? No. Okay, back up, let her talk, then let me talk later, man. <laughs> Step off, Jim. Well, I happen to know where you're going, and I thought you were going to keep going there. That's why I, 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 I know you'll get there after I talk. Um, I was just going to say, as long as you're going to bring up shadow governments, um, don't forget G8. Well, yeah, G8. Because, um, I don't know, I, I wasn't really aware of them other than their name and their general purpose, and I looked, and I didn't realize that Russia has been a member of G8 since long before the Soviet Union collapsed, and we were supposed to be mad at them, weren't we? Yeah. I see well, we were supposed to be against the Nazis, too, but they drank Coca-Cola as well. What did you say? If you're going to say something, say it on the microphone. I can't hear or see anything up here, and I'm on drugs. Prescott Bush ran the Union Bank and was laundering money for the Nazis, 
and uh, Hoover took over, just took everything, took the bank in 1942, because they were laundering Nazi money. Did you notice that Wolf quits? Uh, Wolf, Wolf of Wits quit? Wolf of Wits quit the bank, and they put some other guy in there. You notice how they shuffle the, they move the playing pieces around, now they got a new guy in the, in the bank, the World Bank. And what you were talking about a minute ago, it makes a lot of sense. It, Alberto Gonzalez is smirk he always has. That what you just talked about last five minutes, that's why he's smiling. He really? knows something that everyone else doesn't. He's above the law. He can rip his dick out and piss on everybody. And smile and say, you're breaking the law. Well. <laughs> He's calling us accountable. What I'm, yeah. what I'm getting at, <laughs> what I'm getting at is that there is, and this is, this is, I'm quoting the phrase white horse prophecy because it's something that comes from my background. What, the white horse? No, the Antichrist. Who's saying that? will be the one that destroys us, the Southern Come up here and talk. I, gotta, I can't see or hear you. you got to talk on the microphone. Seriously, come on and talk on the microphone. Seriously, please. No, please. Please. I mean, people need to hear what you have to say. We're on the internet, folks. We're on the so we internet. Need, we, need to get a clean, we need to get a clean feed. By the time we give Iraq their freedom, some of the children of the... At the evil master of Iraq, Saddam Hussein, his sons, which he has so many of, someone from the bloodline, will surface from there. So you That's think that our Antichrist is some booga booga guy from the Middle East? Well, he's somebody who they're against everything that is right because they somebody were polluted against with... Somebody. No, well, this person was polluted by what we went and tried to do for them when they should have been doing it for themselves. They would have destroyed themselves anyway. Right. And by going in there and destroying them, someone in the bloodline is going to come back. That's usually how it works in revenge. So do you think that so you think it'll be a Middle Eastern Antichrist? You don't think it's going to be a Christian Antichrist? Well, that's where they say it all started, so why shouldn't that be where it all is? Good point, but I always thought that maybe in order to have a religion topple, you have to have it come from the inside. And so if we have a Muslim doing it, does that not that doesn't make any sense, does it? I mean, I know you're don't doing you the show. You abandoned, don't you think they've already abandoned what it is they started to do? Who? All, all the people who are, uh, they're against themselves. When they go against themselves, they pretty much abandon everything that they stood for. When you're talking about they, who are you talking about? Anyone who abandons what they stand for. If you stand for one thing, you need to remain in what you stand for. Once you back off from what you stand for, you pretty much have abandoned your whole reason for being. Anyway. Does that include our government? That includes everybody who is alive breathing. If you abandon what you stand for, you pretty much have abandoned everything that you started and that you stand for. So what you're saying is, is he's a great, the, the person that you're talking about has got to be a betrayer or something? Well, I'm talking about somebody from there who already is in a revengeful state. They're, the, the place is, even with us over there trying to help them, they're, all, they're killing themselves left and right. right. Uh, you know, so when they run out of, when, when we sent them to their freedoms that we were speaking of giving to them as we take our own away, uh, what's going to wind up happening is, is no one's going to be watching them for a while. Someone's going to sneak through the cracks. Or they may, be, they may not be able to do anything. We may level them so much that no one will care about them. Oh, they're, if they're not already leveled enough, then they're still there. They're, they're not going to ever be leveled. Do you either. honestly believe, and then I'll move on, do you honestly believe that the people of the Middle East really want to take over the world? I don't think they want to take over it at all. They've abandoned what they stand for. I think they want to see maybe the end of what is happening now. I think the gentleman has an interesting point, Clyde, and that is, is that they, the, the factions in the Middle East, the Muslims, but also the various sects, in the last few years have had a lot of disaster and affliction across them as well. They have a prophetic tradition. It could well be that inside the Muslim world they will produce their own form of Aman or Antichrist or Messiah that they believe is going to take over the world as well. Is it, it seems like a strong problem. In other words, the disasters will create the, the, the environment 
for new prophets and new, and new religious leaders. Every religious group has their apocalypse and everyone wants to carry it out, so he may have a point there where some, some antichrist or imam will come forward from that group and we'll all look at it as a, as, a, as a spit in the face of what Christianity is all about. But what I'm talking about is something that's going to bring down the entire government and bring down the entire religious groups. What I'm talking about is the wishful sinking of Christianity and how it's going to begin and how we're going to be able to turn our affections from what is holy and, and, and what is uh, uh, reverent to that which is profane and that which is governmentized. That which becomes a hegemonistic religious order like a new world order that will be easily uh, converted over to because we will feel as though that these men or these groups are charismatic enough to hold us in high esteem and to take care of us because we're going to have something so fearful, so great and so terrible that we'll have no other choice but to follow the person who has a solution. And those who come forward with the solution will be the ones that we will have to pay homage to and we will have to go after and, and get gain from. But what I'm getting at, what I'm talking a little bit about here is we talk about I was talking about the white horse and what it represents and the white horse of the of the CFR and we take a look at Angelina Jolie joining CFR we heard from the CFR president CFR backing McNeil's CFR is going to be heard a lot lately because CFR is backing all of this stuff right now they are behind your candidates they're they're the ones that are there to help the, the continuity of government continue there are people in various areas of the world that are all together in the CFR group they have plans agendas and you're not a part of that group, so therefore you are going to be their chess pieces in the whole in the whole game. Now, when I talk about this white horse prophecy idea, this comes from another church group that is being represented right now with a presidential candidate, and his name is Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney right now has become probably the favorite conservative candidate out there, and a lot of people are talking about him and wondering if his Mormonism is going to be a detriment to his candidacy. Now one of the things that Mormons, they say they don't believe in, but I remember when I was a kid I was raised hearing about this, something called the White Horse Prophecy, that it had been prophesied by Joseph Smith, the prophet of the LDS Church, that if the Constitution of the United States were hanging by a thread, or if it were being shedded, or shed rather, then what would happen is that an elder of Israel, meaning someone who was a member of the Mormon Church, would come in and save the Constitution, and, and, it, and it would take that body to save that document. Mitt Romney fits that bill. And the idea of the white horse being pre prevalent, the white horse prophecy, the white horse being the white horse of the CFR, it's now speculated that Mitt Romney is a member of CFR. I said speculated. You can say it's speculated. You can look it up. It's all spec I'm telling you speculation, sir. I'm not saying it's confirmed, it's speculation. That word is speculate, okay? Chances are he probably is a member of CFR. Highly probable, because he's a rich man. What else? I mean, he's gotta be on the board of committee to make the decisions for you, because he's got the bucks to do so. So if he's on CFR, and he's that white horse, you know, prophecy guy, it's supposed to come and save the Constitution, allegedly, then not only is he a white horse, but he's also a red herring. A red herring candidate, if you will. Go ahead. The only thing I was trying to say is that no, as far as online is concerned and everything that's available there, I've been researching this and I'm afraid that no one is speculating that. No Prison one. Planet is speculating that. They're no one. Prison Planet is speculating it. <laughs> Alex Jones is speculating it. All right. Okay. It's Alex fucking Jones. I mean, I, I'm sorry, but you know, Alex Jones and I'm Paul sorry Gold when he wipes his ass, gold comes out. It's Alex fucking Jones. All right. Okay. I mean, I could say it. I could say something. People go, "Oh, I cried. He's drunk." And we all worship Mr. Jones. We all worship Mr. Jones <laughs> and Mr. Rents sometimes. Okay. Ah! Go ahead, Bob. Let's just remember the CFR is only one of these organizations, and I would consider the CFR to be subservient to the Bilderbergers. Well, the Bilderbergs and the CFRs are probably on the same page. Well, yeah, but I would say the Bilderbergers are above them in the, in the status of, of those sort of societies. And that they take their marching orders via the Bilderbergers. And who knows if Romney's not a member of that. So you're saying that all, all of our, you're saying that all of our stuff is being planned in smoky rooms in Switzerland? Uh, to a great degree, I think that's true. Okay. Yeah. At least for the money power. I mean, that's where the money power 
okay. congregates. And they're far more secretive than the CFO. And if I remember, just as a historical note, if I remember correctly, the CFR came, I can't remember the name, but there was a comparable, and still is, British group, comparable to the CFR, that the CFR would get, that gave birth to the CFR back in the 20s. And it was one of Cecil Rhodes' groups. Uh, is it the, the what? RIA. RIA. The Royal. The Royal Institute of International Affairs. The Royal Institute of International Affairs. Oh, okay. And they were the precursors and still exist as far as I know. And they gave birth to the CFR. Okay. Again, our British heritage and our, that, the whole British thing you're talking you know about. They're taking over. Well, again, as we said several weeks ago, the financial center is moving back to London. City of years. London now as opposed to New York. Right, City of London is the most... It is in the process. Yes, yeah, City of London now. is the most profitable city now in the world. New York no longer is. Um, we have every we have every reality show out there hosted by some British guy. You know, we've got Simon Cowell, we've got some other bozo that, that's uh, judging some other show. We've got Hugh Laurie on House. Hugh Laurie on House, we got Hugh Laurie. Wasn't he in the Black Adder? Yes, yes he okay. was. It makes sense. As Those goddamn brick toms, they're coming to haunt us, aren't they? Yeah, Time ahead. begins and ends in London. Time begins and ends in London. Greenwich. All of it. Yeah, sure. So that's going to be the world power. Of course they're going to be the world power. I've been saying this forever. They're going to be the seat. They're going to be the world power. They're going to be the world power. And we're going to balkanize, and so are they, the EU and the UU and the and the fuck you, they're all going to come together and they're all going to fuck you. Yes, that's exactly okay. what they're going to do. That's what their plan is. Here's a joke. A joke that's been running around for 200 years, but it still holds true. Is the sun never sets on the British Empire because God can't trust it in the dark. <laughs> the Queen said that, didn't she? The time of Princess Diana's death or somebody else's death. By the way, we're missing the princes tonight, but we're going to record it and play it next week probably. I'm trying to get it recorded right now. We want to hear what the princes have to say because, quite frankly, I'm a Diana whore. Diana Vile. I, I do want to live in a world where a candle in the wind is played every fucking hour on the hour. Die, motherfucker, die! No. <laughs> but that's just a I, I mean, I am one of the 58% that don't like my candidates, and so I want Princess Diana for president. Hey, let's hear it. She may be dead, but we can still jump her bones. She's hot. She's Princess Diana. What? Where's Terry tonight? Nice what? What? I can't hear anything. Who's not dead? Who's not dead? Diana. Diana's not dead? You believe what? You believe in a conspiracy that she's still alive? Who said that? Well, come up and talk to us about this. I want to know what you think about that. Elvis, John Lennon, and all of them are sitting together having a good laugh. Okay, go ahead, Eric, and then, well, wait a minute. Come up here and tell me about Diana not being dead. I want to hear this. It's awesome. Well, I just think that the Queen wanted her out of the picture, so it was all just a pretty scud. They faked it? Uh, you think they faked it? Yeah, yeah, and I bet you she's hiding in some Caribbean island, you know, with Tony Fuzz. That's not a bad look. Loving it up on the uh, beach there. All right. Yeah. All right. I think that's amazing. Hey, Give her a hand. She's... What about William and Harry? What do they think? You know, I'll tell you what. There are a lot of people that believe Princess Diana is still alive and she's going to resurrect someday. What about and she's going to come up with caliber in her hand and she's going to hand it to Prince William and poof, King Arthur. I still think that. I still think that the Lady of the Lake is going to hand that sword over to Prince William and we're going to have the King of Kings right there, baby. And we're going to give him frankincense and myrrh and everything else to give the Prince. Go ahead. Do you think, you think Cho is still alive? No. Too much of? No. You think he's dead? I think he's dead. How long do you think it will be within the next, do you think for the next 90 days or 120 days that we will be attacking, openly attacking Iran? No, I think that within, I think that by August we're going to be seeing a lot of shit going down. I think their plan is around August, September again. The reason why I'm saying this is, uh, here's something that you're going to, you're going to really, really, really weird out by. It's back to this Mormon shit again, this white horse prophecy stuff, and it all has a point. So here's the deal. There's a new movie coming out called September Dawn. Has anybody heard of it? By applause? No, of course not. Go see it. It's called September Dawn. 
It stars John Boyd. Does anybody know who John Boyd is? Angelina Jolie's father, exactly. Yeah, he stars in it. And here's the deal. The movie is about, well, this is how they preview it. They go, September 11th, a time where religious fanatics open fire on innocent people and kill them. September 11th, 1857. In September 11th, 1857, Mormon settlers opened fire on people from New Jersey. They, these New Jersey people. It's so fucking embarrassing. Okay, here's the story in a nutshell. I learned this in American in, in Utah history class. Parley P. Pratt, who was one of the general authorities of the Mormon Church, was basically having sex with some woman wanting to have him be his next wife or something. He was collecting wives in New Jersey. So what happens is some jealous husband shot his ass, killed him, the word got back to Brigham Young, and Brigham Young was ro royally pissed off, right? So Brigham Young tells the settlers in this area, as these New Jerseyans are like coming down the pike, or Arkansas, I don't know if they're from Arkansas or New Jersey or something, some place where you're not supposed to have sex with people's wives. <laughs> that could be anybody or anywhere. So what happened is they're coming down this wagon train, and this guy gets word from Brigham Young, oh, by the way, you're supposed to kill all these people because they killed your, your general authority guy. So what they did is they brought these Indians in, these Paiute Indians in, to basically pretend like they're holding up the wagon train. They circle the trains, and then this Mormon guy came out and said, hey, I need you to save passage to these Indians. Follow me. And so what they do is they follow everybody. They follow everybody into their own death, and then all the Mormons basically turn their guns on all these people and shoot them all dead. And that's what happened. It happened on September 11, 1857. It's called the Mountain Meadows Massacre. You can look it up. But it's conveniently being produced and released at a time when we have a guy who was Mormon running for president of the United States. It stars John Boyd, who is the father of Angelina Jolie, who just joined the CFR. White Horse, White Horse Prophecy. I'm having some sort of connect the dots thing here right now, and I don't know where the fuck I'm going with it, but still. It's pretty bizarre that this shit's going on. And they're, they're comparing it to September 11th. So not only do you have that September 11th beam going through your head, you got the White Horse beam going through your head, you've got John Boyd going through your head, and I don't know what that means. But, you know, you can't have, how many, it was, I think Sarah that brought up the idea. How many people have seen that movie, uh, Tomb Raider? Tomb Raider. John Boyd was in that movie, and so was Angelina Jolie, and Tom, uh, and, and Boyd played the part of the guy who was a member of the Illuminati, and she was fighting the Illuminati in that movie. John Boyd was also in a movie, played uh, in that movie called, um, the, uh, not The Siege, but uh, Under Siege. The Under Siege, Under Siege with uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff, Fresh Prince. He was in that Fresh Prince movie with John Boyd, who was in it, and he played this guy who was the center that killed somebody. His birthday was September 11th. It's not, I'm not kidding. You look all this shit up. It's all this weird September 11th shit that's coming back at you, and it's coming back at you in Technicolor Hollywood style. And they're throwing the Mormons in for good measure. White Horse Prophecy, CFR, Angelina Jolie's Designer Kids. My God, we live in a fucked up world, don't we? And that's, and, and I mean, you know, this all sounds crazy right now, but someday you're gonna be watching the news and go, oh, I get it now. I get it, you're, you're, your face is buried in your Captain Crunch, you're nursing a hangover, and you're going, I finally figured this shit, thank you, Clyde. I, I now feel better for learning about this. Well, Clyde, if you know One person claps in the fucking audience, you guys will all be thanking me later. You know what I think I we can do, it. Clyde? What we can do is we can start the petition right here to restore the monarchy. Right here, Ground Zero allows all the patriots say bring back the queen and see just how far it gets. The Ground Zero referendum. I think what I ought to do is I ought to just take a video and go around and ask people and say, hey, if Prince William was the king, would you, and he decided to take over the world, would you be into it? Oh yeah, they would. I bet a lot of chicks, oh yeah, man, he's so hot. <laughs> he's so hot, he's better than Bush. <laughs> He's better than Bush, he doesn't sound like a Star Wars character like Obama. You know, I'm sure 58% hate this fucking whole boat. They want it to go away. So what better way to take it to go away than have this nice little show they're having with Matt Lauer. Matt Lauer and the two princes. You know, the princes are there talking, you know, it's like, oh, okay, we're all gonna gather around the two kids and watch our new leaders take over the world. Why the sudden interest? The sudden interest is because the people are demanding it. The people are demanding the Angelina Jolie's. They're demanding the Brad Pitt's. They're demanding this royalty bullshit. They're fascinated with people like Britney Spears. When people like Paris Hilton take a dump, when they go to jail, when man, that's fucking news. And you know when you hear something else fucked up? 
Guess where our good buddy uh, Paris Hilton was staying? What prison she's staying in? Anyone want to take a guess? Twin Towers. The Twin Towers! The Twin Towers the correctional facility. How's that for fucked up? We put the goddess between the two towers, it's a tarot card. It's a fucking tarot card. Not bad for a guy who's on drugs, huh? Yeah, well, thank you, HSU, give me good drugs today. What's that? Who's back in jail? I'm just back in jail. Yeah. Yeah, she, they moved her back because she had to She's go. converted, too, I hear. Oh, she converted to what? She's converted. Islam? What? No, no, she's converted. She's become... I can just see her in a burka with Christina Ricci. Yeah. <laughs> she she shows up, look, I'm naked under here. <laughs> I hear she's converted to Judaism. <laughs> that was stupid. She's become a... Did anybody catch that? Naked under here. Ah, oh, fuck you. Okay, go ahead. Um, well, on the topic of... Um, you know, 58% uh, don't like Bush, don't want to see him in uh, office any longer. Uh, and it got me, and I, um, I didn't quite think of this until I was riding a bus the other day, and here on the ceiling of the bus, here's this advertisement for uh, the local uh, supposedly uh, progressive talk station in Portland. And it all, and it said, 12009, until then, listen to us. And th there are kind of just uh, all kind of kind of came together for me. I noticed, okay, you know, there's all of this stuff. You know, you, you know, you can pick up magazines and books and everything about why Bush should be impeached. You, you could listen to radio stations saying that. Heck, the other day, I even saw a countdown clock that said, you know, countdown to inauguration day, and, and you set it, and, it, and it's just a constant. Uh, you know, you know, goes down every second clock to uh, what inauguration day is. Can I stop uh, you for a moment? Can I stop you for a moment? I just came up with a brilliant idea. Anybody want to make a bumper sticker? Impeach Bush. He's already impaired. I think that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Impeach the impaired, George Bush. That's a good one. Um, one thing I was going to say though. Is, that's fucking brilliant. It's a really good thing. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really think the reason why genius, really. he, you know he hasn't been impeached yet is because the companies that are making all this impeachment stuff are making too much money doing it. You know, if he actually gets impeached, well, you know they're going to be like, well, well, we have this entire factory full of uh, impeached Bush stuff. What do we do with it now? Yeah, I still say impeach the impaired. It's up there with I club my dog. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> You also visit hospitals. I sprayed my wife, exactly. You also visit hospitals just to make a story. I put my seal. Okay, go ahead. I just want to jump on the John Boyd thing and the Jimmy Hoffman. Midnight Cowboy. Please save me from embarrassment. Midnight Cowboy, 1967. That's one of the. Was he naked? Was he naked in that film? What was he now? Well, you know, to me it was like the last great film about the frontier in America where a guy is in Texas. He's looking to go to New York, to the frontier, you know, something new. He goes to New York, things go to shit, so he goes, hey, let's go to Florida. And then, you know, we all, we've seen the movie, you know what goes on. Do you know who plays Brigham Young in that movie? Terrence Stamp. Oh. Terrence. Do you know who Terrence Stamp is? Yeah. He played Sod in Superman too. Yeah, he played that. Uh, I can just imagine going, Near before Assad, and he's Brigham Young with a beard. Oh, before that, he's got this line of 27 wives kneeling before. It's gonna be fucking cool. <laughs> when he was a young man, I'm going. He, I'm going. You bet. He go. played Billy Budd when he was a young man too. For those uh, Billy uh, Budd. Billy Budd. Wow. Wasn't he in that uh, Queen film about those Australian uh, drag queens too? <laughs> oh, he was. A, what was it? Was it? Did you see that? Yeah. Fag. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, don't throw shit, please. Hugo Weaving was in it, too. Oh, Hugo Weaving. Yeah, I love Hugo Weaving. Fag. No, go ahead. I just want to jump back from Midnight Cowboy. Go back. When you got a Mormon movie showing Mormons killing innocent people. Holy shit, that's great. I'm going to be president of the United States. You know, some rhyme. Yeah, but uh, if we... If the last... If the... Uh, whatever... Uh, the Christ movie that uh, Braveheart did. Oh, uh, the, the the last torture. Yeah, the last torture. Let's read the shit out of a Jew. Was it any indication? I can imagine that uh, that every elder in every 
Tam uh, LDS Temple throughout the country is going to implore their masses to go boost that movie into. Well, actually, actually, I think Mormons have a healthy attitude about the Mountain Meadow Massacre because I think they realize that it was a criminal element within the Mormon Church that committed that crime. What Americans have to realize is that it was a criminal element that committed the crime of September 11th, 2001. And be our government. They need to change that analogy around saying, yes, a very, very influential church had a very, very horrible thing happen to it back in the 18... Hundreds that happened on September 11th, just like a very, very, very strong yeah, influential yeah. government fucked themselves by blowing up two buildings on in New York City on 9/11. No, no, three. Uh, three. Uh, Clyde, I find, I find it interesting. Building seven. They took that down too, didn't they? I find it interesting, Clyde. Uh, yes. Though. Yes. Okay, please. it was 1857. Right. But I think that news was overshadowed by bigger news going on that year. What's that? You were the there. Second, no, the Sepoy mutiny. The what mutiny? The India Mutiny. Okay. Where you had the British government in, uh, in India. Oh, I see. Under You're going, the stuff? No, 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 no. 1857. Oh, sorry. No, you, where both that's the Hindu, 1900. Sorry. Where both the Hindus and the Muslims rose up against the, the British. Well, you know, maybe it'll happen again. It is happening now. Yeah. Britannia rules. V for Vendetta. Yeah, right. Okay. Go ahead, Glenn. What do you have to say? I think this qualifies as being on topic now. Yes, it does. Uh, I'll give you time to get on topic. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Glenn is going to give you an announcement on topic. Here we go. Impeach the impaired. Just kidding. Go ahead. Solstice, solstice, solstice. That's this Thursday, June 21st. Don't tell me you get naked and run around and jump over branches and shit. <laughs> that's later. What? That, that's later. That's, that's, that's what you want to do? At 7 p.m., okay, go ahead. I'm, I'm going to be at Liberty Hall, um, ex Star Wars Supremo, under President Ford and Carter, will be speaking live at Liberty Hall at 7 o'clock this Thursday, June 21st. Liberty Hall. Uh, Bob Bowman. Bob Bowman, right? Yes. Yeah, and you're going to be down there filming. Bowman. You're going to be filming that, so it's going to be a thing to go see. When is it again? The 11th? Thursday. 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 It's on the Solstice. The 21st, on the Solstice. At 7 p.m. at Liberty right. Hall. Right. Um, his website is thepatriots.us. Patriots.us. Sounds exciting. Bob Bowman. It'll be a good show. Everybody will be there from Public Access Television. For sure. I hope I get to go. Am I allowed? Yes! Really? Thank yeah. for! Okay. So everybody went and saw Michael Rupert. I felt a little weird when I got up after somebody had asked if pirates were invading the West Coast. I, I felt a little weird. I, I, I did, really. I mean, there are a lot of fucking weirdos that talk about shit like that. I don't know. So I'll be there. I will. Does anybody have anything else? <laughs> anyway, I just want to let you all know that um, I want to thank you all for those of you that um, I haven't even seen my email yet. I've been away from email for a while. Uh, I want to thank all those who wished me well uh, while I was in the hospital. I mean, I, I, I jumped right out of bed and came here tonight and went right from the hospital room to here. I've jumped from planes to do shows. I've jumped never from hospital beds. I've jumped out of planes, yes. Um, but I've never, I've never jumped out of a hospital bed with demanding that the tubes be removed from me in order for, I mean, check this out, this is really stupid. Hold on. Oh, oh, please, oh. Please, I still have my IV, you know, my IV bandage. Yeah. So I, I just walked right out of the hospital, right into the lounge, and to do this tonight. And, um, but the truth of the matter is, is that I'm okay. For those of you that want to know, there's a big if here, but that cancer that I have may be gone, maybe in remission. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean that there are not some other things they're looking into and trying to get me to feel better over. Um, but I'm still doing what I do. And a lot of people shake their heads and wonder why I'm doing it. Why more I keep, drugs. Why, if more drugs, yes. You I do it for the drugs. Yeah, but but why did you ride the tram? No, I didn't ride the tram. <laughs> they wouldn't allow me. There was like a two drink limit and I had to be at least I had to be at least this tall to kiss ass to get on the tram. And they wouldn't let me on. Now actually, um, they, you know, 
Yeah, yeah I can see my house from there. Um, I just want to let you know that um, things, uh, you know, I'm going to probably, hopefully, find ways to vent my frustrations and uh, do a lot better to myself, which, you know, I, I, I always go. I've got two speeds, fast and sleep, and a lot less sleep than fast. And uh, the doctors have told me that I need to quit being so goddamn fast. So if I talk slower, slower. How about, but, maybe people will get what I'm saying. But no, I'm drinking just, slower. No, I'm not even going to drink slow. No, but what I'm saying is, is that, you know, I'm, I'm getting over my extended adolescence, but I'm still going to be a goof. I'm still going to be talking about conspiracy theories. I'm still going to be talking about what's going on in the news. I'm still going to be doing that shit because I think it's a whole lot of fun to fuck with them. And I want you to fuck with them every chance you get. And I want you all to have a good night tonight. And I want to thank you all. I want to thank Drew for doing what he does. It's yeah, a beautiful thing. Give him a hand, please. I want you to thank all of the bar people here at Dante's. I want to thank Sarah for what she does. Thank Frank for what he does. Thank old Robert here for making me look good on camera, even though I'm not wearing product in my hair. Oh, no problem. How's that for fact? No What's that? And Stevie, the man of the hour, who does the best sound ever. And he keeps me looking pale. I love it. Good night, everybody. 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 Good night, everyb